Hello, I wanted to do a short video on making dowels on metal lathe because this is working out so well I thought that people could use this in their own shops. So we're turning square rough stock like this into perfectly dimensioned dowels of various hardwoods with an extremely fine surface finish right off the lathe. Because we're using a metal lathe, we can get extremely good tolerance across the whole dowel. Looking at 325 here, 326 here, and 327, 328 there, which is pretty good for wood turning. One of the things I found out when you when you turn a turn any kind of small diameter wooden dowel or project on a lathe you're going to get chatter in the center of the lathe and you're going to end up having this center, this portion of the dowel being thinner just because of the chatter than the ends. Also you'll see if you look at this dowel this was the surface finish is quite rough whereas with this setup the surface finish comes out polished and you can really see the rays in the wood right off the bat. So this is the infamous Chinese lathe that everybody calls it. It's a grizzly. I've had a lot of luck buying a lot of grizzly tools over the years. Um, we have three parts. You have a miniature spur set, spur drive right here. You have a trimmer router with a 3 8 inch end mill on it for the cutting. You have a steady rest and you have a live center which also has a custom insert. So here's the spur center that I've made. It's made out of a piece of quarter inch rod, drilled for the center, which is removable. It can be put into a point if you're doing regular wood turning, and milled to give you two drive spur flutes. Here's the uh, end mill on the trimmer router and you'll see the steady rest is a hole drilled in plywood that's exactly the same size as what we're trying to get. It's held in place with a little magnetic latch. So the drive center is one of these magnetic ones where you can put anything you want in it. Same thing, then cut down, removable center, and that's about all we have. So here's the setup and let's uh, turn. You place the part with the spur center, not on the glue line, but on the meat of the wood. the tail stock to drive the wood onto the spur. Now it's going to get noisy. In this setup you always want to turn the router on first in case there's any binding, then turn on the lathe, then I'm going to use a vacuum and we'll use the feed on the lathe to drive it through.
So now you see you've gone from a rough square to a polished towel and the steady rest is what makes it possible because it's actually burnishing the surface while holding it very still during the cutting process. So you can power through these in only a few seconds. You can drive this through and you come up with a nice even dowel. A couple things I'd like to point out with how the router is mounted on the lathe. This block has been cut. It's just maple with um, some bolts that go into the T-slots on the cross slide. Um, it's using the actual mounting part, there, there's the, the normal table that the router attaches to, and that's screwed through this wooden part to hold it in place. And then you can use the table to move it in and out, and the two bolts in the T-slot to square it up. One thing I found is that because these routers are designed to blow air out this end, is that this piece of mylar with just a small hole in it keeps the chips from being blown all over the place, makes it easier to suck them up with a vacuum cleaner without having any problems.